Item number SCP-616 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-616 to be kept in sight While grounded, repair personnel of a clearance level of 2 or above are allowed to enter the craft and must conduct thorough pre-flight inspections to ascertain that SCP-616 is ready for flight. However, repair personnel are to maintain a distance of at least 3 meters from SCP-616-1. On flight days, only ordained and believing ministers of an Abrahamic faith with security clearance of level 4 or above may enter the aircraft, and must remain at least .94 meters or 3 foot 1 inches from the threshold of SCP-616-1 at all times whilst the craft is grounded. SCP-616-1 should be kept from closing at all costs once activated. This necessitates a monthly manned flight. Failure to keep SCP-616-1 from closing will require initiation of Procedure 600-Shoki. Each flight, seven archbishops ordained and believing in an Abrahamic faith must surround SCP-616-1. Prayer directed at SCP-616-1 is to be sustained during the whole duration of the flight, usually three to seven hours. Prayer must be sustained by all able subjects, but once SCP-616-1 is activated, previously established distance restrictions no longer apply. Subjects are in fact encouraged to try to physically stop SCP-616-1 from closing, though extreme caution must be taken to keep any personnel from falling through the threshold, as that will likely result in in addition, one Foundation agent trained in flying commercial aircraft is to pilot SCP-616 through a pre-designed flight path, and must be able to maintain radio contact and information of events in SCP-616. Under no circumstances is the pilot cleared to approach SCP-616-1 once flight has begun. All personnel should be supplied with any religious paraphernalia they request before flight time. No extraneous personnel are to be present during flight for any reason, as they will likely be killed by SCP-616's activation and provide corpses for reanimation or The Roman Catholic Pope, or a similar Abrahamic religious figure, must bless the aircraft in accordance with the appropriate religious ceremony once per full year. The official must report to the Foundation and arrive physically at the containment site at least three days prior to the year elapsing. Failure to do so may result in the door opening, resulting in In the unlikely event that any official misses the ceremony, a substitute of equal rank must be on hand to replace him or her. Furthermore, two nuclear devices with a combined yield of megatons are to be armed inside the aircraft at all times. In the event of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, or if the door closes during flight, resulting in or transfers hostile beings in large numbers, these devices are to be detonated if Procedure 600-Shoki cannot be enacted. Those with clearance 4 or higher, please see Document SCP-616-CP-3. SCP-616 is a prototype Boeing designed by and constructed in June 16, 1966 to specifications. Though superficially similar to the Boeing 737 which went into service shortly afterwards, SCP-616's model had various internal alterations, including Despite the various alterations, the most important feature of SCP-616 is the center-left emergency door, which had been dubbed SCP-616-1. SCP-616-1 is a standard emergency door, though partially covered in extensive markings associated with satanic cults adhering to. SCP-616-1 can be opened without major incident when grounded, and leads to the outside of the aircraft as expected. However, this is discouraged that nearly all personnel opening and or passing through the door have reported severe anxiety problems and a persistent feeling of being watched. Long-term observation or exposure to SCP-616 is not recommended. Observation using any sort of electronic device is satisfactory while SCP-616 is grounded, though some visual anomalies have been recorded, including as such, it is advised that personnel known to have a high tolerance to disturbing imagery be assigned to observation duty and work no longer than three consecutive days. All personnel involved in the repairs, observation, operation, or flight of SCP-616 must submit to psychological evaluation after each period of exposure. SCP-616-1 will autonomously open once every 30 days and begin to close. 
This event can be considered the activation of SCP-616-1, the speed at which SCP-616-1 closes is highly dependent on SCP-616's altitude, velocity, and… It should be timed so that SCP-616-1 opens in mid-flight, at an altitude of approximately 10,972 meters and a speed of about 780 km per hour. Failure to properly time this event is catastrophic, since SCP-616-1 closing fully while grounded could affect all life forms within an unknown radius, causing potentially hundreds of posing severe threats to population centers and requiring immediate use of Procedure 600 Shoki. Please see Document SCP-616-DE2 for further information on an effective means of termination. Once SCP-616-1 spontaneously opens, cabin pressure will destabilize as expected, and extreme turbulence is encountered. At various points during the flight, all present personnel may feel that SCP-616 is quickly falling, though it has been ascertained that SCP-616 remains in relatively stable cruising conditions during all times, including during the times of these events. SCP-616-1's opening may cause certain individuals present to suffer fatal heart attacks or Corpses with an undamaged larynx present within SCP-616 once SCP-616-1 activates seemingly reanimate for the duration of the flight. The corpses remain largely immobile, and as such pose no physical threat, but are capable of speech. These speaking corpses should be terminated if possible, as their speech poses potential psychological dangers as well as enable SCP-616-1's closing via the language spoken by these reanimated corpses remain unidentified. Addendum 616-01 The airliner series never went into service, as the various anomalous events surrounding SCP-616's test flights were reported as various design failures. All plans and blueprints have been seized by the Foundation. It is now believed designs were entirely intentional and done under no external compulsion. Recovered documents from the construction process describe Addendum 616-02 On A remote-controlled rover attained footage from within SCP-616-1. All personnel who viewed this footage directly committed suicide by various means within a two-month period. A security tape of the video with the recording playing did not cause any death, despite containing full sound and color recordings of the footage. It displayed a video of a small child violently being within a dark red room. All further attempts to observe past the event horizon have yielded similar results, and such expeditions are no longer permitted. Addendum 616-03 Interview logs pertaining to SCP-616 are available in Document Interview 616-AM. Document SCP-616-CP-3 Note, clearance level 4 or higher required. Though the current containment procedure specified the necessity of Abrahamic faith and prayers to keep SCP-616-1 from closing, this necessity is in fact fabricated. After various interviews with a single test run and it was determined that the belief in one's ability to close SCP-616-1 was ultimately the critical component to being able to accomplish the deed. However, it seems individuals in possession of this fact fare worse than individuals who are not at keeping SCP-616-1 closed. Whether this is due to properties of SCP-616-1 or human psychology is unknown. In regards to this problem, Dr. suggested using religion as an abundant and efficient way to harness belief. The current satanic markings were in fact added by the Foundation. The requirement of an Abrahamic leader's blessing, as well as using ordained Abrahamic preachers for the act itself, are all for the benefit of maintaining morale and reinforcing belief. This method has proven successful, as each flight since the first has had fewer casualties and a shorter duration. Interview 616-AM Partial Log of Interview A Subject with only surviving passenger aboard the flight that brought SCP-616 to the Foundation's attention. Dr. Glass do you want some water before we continue, or perhaps something to eat? I know you've had a long day. I keep a few snacks here at my desk if you'd like something. N no nothing. Alright, go on then. What happened during takeoff? Nothing at first. Everyone was excited, you know. Promised us we'd be able to witness 
at last and we believed him. Then, stood up and we all started singing and everyone was cheering with excitement when the door flung open and then it started. Go on, be specific. The screaming. The screaming started. It was just sorta of normal at first. The oxygen mass dropped down as the air started rushing out, and everything started swaying. The lights went out just then, but it wasn't dark. There was light coming from outside. From the door. I see, but I understand the flight took place at midnight? No, no, it wasn't natural light. It was just haze. Of red, mostly. Colors. But they weren't colors. Everyone started screaming for real when a bunch of people started bleeding and going limp. But they started speaking, in unison. They were the Chosen, but I wasn't among them. Subject covered face with hands. They… I don't know what they were saying. They were chanting it, but people were still screaming. I was screaming and… was yelling something at the open door, and then George… got up, walked up the door and… he jumped. He jumped out of the airplane? No, not out of the airplane. There wasn't an outside anymore. It was… it was paradise. What have been talking about, just like he said. That's when the angel came. I couldn't see very well. I was in the far back, but suddenly lots of people got up, and the screaming mostly stopped and the chanting got louder and… was still yelling something, and then more angels came. Angels everywhere. Angels. And they ripped and ripped and ripped and harvested, but the harvested kept speaking. Kept chanting just like… said. And there were hands. So many hands pushing me towards the door, and an angel ripping, ripping, harvesting around me, and I wanted to get away. I ran towards the door, but… Subject is seen breathing heavily. Take it easy. What happened then? I don't know. When I woke up, I was like this. Subject motions towards legs, both of them nearly severed at the knees. You don't remember anything else? We know why the door didn't close all the way, but do you remember, perhaps, how the plane managed to land safely? Or what became of is in paradise with I didn't see it when he went in, but everything was just like he said. He was right. He was right about everything. But about the plane. Nothing in our testing seems to indicate the plane is capable of landing on its own. Was a Boeing engineer, right? Would he have been capable of landing the aircraft? Is capable of everything. He opened the door to paradise. He'll come back for me one day. I know he will. One day. One day. When I'm worthy, he will. Partial Log of Interview M Subject was on board on the Foundation's fifth man flight of SCP-616, and the first flight with no occurrence of… Dr. Sanders Very well, Father. Please continue. Father… I hadn't so much as done an exorcism before, you know. I mean, I believed in evil, and I knew what must exist, but I never thought. What happened after the door opened? We kept praying. I had my eyes closed. I was terrified of being sucked out. I felt the fires, the heat, and sulfur of hell. The heat was immediate, the smoke almost suffocating. Father clutched his chest and fell over, and I almost went down to see if he was okay, but I knew I had to keep praying. The plane started shaking, and I could barely stand up. We were all just standing there, praying so hard. What did you see inside the door? Nothing. It was just blackness. But there was just sort of light that spilled out. Or maybe more like glowing smoke. It's hard to describe. What happened then? Well, Father… started speaking. That's really when I knew everything your people had told me was true. His dead body was possessed. It was speaking in tongues. We just kept standing there, praying we were right, that everything you told us was true, and that we could keep this door from closing. But it looked like the door was still closing slowly, and we didn't know how long we were supposed to last. That was when Bishop walked up the door and started pushing it back. It worked. We all joined him. Did that stop the door from closing further? Just for a bit, yeah. But then it started closing again, and we kept pushing back, and praying, but it was hard. I was afraid I was going to fall out. The plane was shaking so much, and the lights flickered, and Father was still there on the floor looking up at us with cold eyes, chanting in some hellish tongue. I am told the whole thing lasted four hours, but it felt like forever. I don't remember it much, except the following. Near the end, it felt like the airplane was crashing. I thought we were all going down, that this was the end. It's like when you're going down in a really fast elevator, but worse. 
Everything was shaking, and I felt this abyss below me open up, and we were all praying, and I was pushing against the door so hard my hands were bleeding. And then it all stopped. Just like that. Bishop fell out through the door, out into the real sky. I think he must have been exhausted, a man his age. He saw the clouds and just smiled and stopped holding on for a second and just fell. Nothing we could do. We heard the pilot telling us through the PA that we could close the door now and to take a seat and put on the oxygen mask until we landed.